In this video, I'm going to talk you through how to examine a patient's thyroid and their thyroid status. To proceed with this examination, you need a few pieces of equipment. That is, a piece of paper, a tendon hammer, and a glass of water. Once you've assembled these pieces, just uh, approach your patient and introduce yourself. Today, I'm being helped by my colleague, Amy. Hello, Amy. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Would you mind if I examine your thyroid? Sure. Thank you very much. To begin your examination, simply inspect your patient. Uh, there are several things you need to look for. Starting with the neck, there's, uh, it's important to look for any obvious goiter, which is uh, a swelling in the lower part of the neck that may extend either upwards or downwards, depending on the patient. In addition to that, you should look for any abnormal pulsation in the neck, any displacement of the trachea, which may be apparent. On occasion, you may observe distended veins, although this is rare. That can happen if there's any SVC obstruction, although it's important to recognize this is very rarely encountered clinically. Finally, there may be obvious signs of that indicate a patient may be either hypo or hyperthyroid. For example, they may appear tremulous and agitated if they're hyperthyroid, or they may appear obese uh, if their thyroid is underactive. They may also look as though they're exhibiting signs of heat or cold intolerance. So if they're wearing lots of warm clothes in a warm room, for example, that could indicate that they're hypothyroid in a similar fashion. If they're wearing not many clothes in a cold room, that may indicate that they have an overactive thyroid. Next, begin examining your patient. And of course, as always, we start with the patient's hands. So I'm just going to kneel down. I'm going to ask the patient, first of all, to hold her hands out so that I can observe them. Would you mind just holding your hands out in front? Look at the patient's hands to see if they have any tremor uh, or if they're shaking. This may be immediately obvious clinically, or it may not. A very good way to test for uh, tremor associated with hyperthyroidism is to simply balance a sheet of paper on top of the patient's hands, like so, and just see if they can hold it steady. This is completely normal. Let's see. Next, inspect your patient's hands and ask to have a look at the fingernails. It's important to look for clubbing, so look at them from the side. This can be found in patients who have thyroid acropatchy. And also look at the fingernails for any signs of onycholysis, for example. Then ask the patient to turn their hands over and just inspect the palms to see if they have any evidence of palm erythema. Amy here does not have any of these things at all. Completely normal hands. Finally, before you proceed to examine the patient's thyroid, we're just going to take their pulse to see if they have atrial fibrillation. Next, inspect your patient's face, in particular starting with the eyes. In patients with Graves' disease, it's common to get Graves' eye disease. Uh, this is characterized by uh, eyes which change their anatomy uh, due to inflammation of the retroorbital space. Now, in this case, you may see signs such as exophthalmos, which is where you can see the white of the eye above and below uh, when the patient is staring forwards. So I'm just going to ask you to look directly forwards and just inspect from the side. In addition, you're going to check the patient to see if they have any lid lag. So again, keeping the patient looking forward, you just ask to make them, uh, you ask them to make vertical eye movements following your finger. So just look at my finger here and follow my finger all the way up and all the way down. Thank you. This is completely normal. Now, in patients with thyroid eye disease, you may see the lid lag, which is where the upper lid uh, lags behind on the downward gaze. Many of the signs encountered in hypothyroidism aren't really seen in clinical practice anymore because patients with hypothyroidism tend to be medicated. So it's unlikely that you will see in an exam any of the following things. But the examiners may expect you to know and identify things such as what's known as a peaches and cream complexion and spare lo loss of hair on the outer third of the eyebrow. As I say, none of these things are particularly likely to be encountered in real life, but you should be able to discuss them if required. Next, you need to inspect the patient's thyroid a further time, looking for any swelling in the neck. Okay, so we're going to have another look. Uh, 
that's good. Then you need to stand behind your patient and palpate the thyroid. It's best to explain the patient that you're about to do this. So I'm just going to ask you to stay seated as you are. I'm going to stand right behind you. I'm just going to press on, on, on your neck. Okay. All right. Now, gently palpate all along the patient's neck from just under the chin, down both sides of the neck, uh, including the isthmus of the thyroid and also in the supraclavicular fossa. You may be able to palpate abnormalities in any of these places. Next, hand your patient a cup of water. Okay. In a second, I'm going to ask you to take a sip of this water in your mouth. Okay. Just hold it in your mouth until I say swallow and then swallow the water. Okay. Please take a sip of the water, palpate the patient's thyroid and ask them to swallow the water. Okay. In addition, you can ask the patient to stick out their tongue while, uh, just while you're pressing on their neck. Next, you're going to auscultate the patient's thyroid. Uh, some patients may have a brewy. You're also going to percuss down the sternum to see if they have a retrosternal goiter. Amy, if it's okay, I'm just gonna have a listen to your neck with my stethoscope. And I'm just gonna tap on the front of your chest there. Finally, inspect your patient's lower legs. Amy, would you mind rolling your trousers up above your knees? Thank you very much. Now about to check the patient's reflexes and have a look at their shins. So here we go. That's good. There we go. In very few patients, it may be possible that you see pretibial myxedema. However, this is now a rare clinical sign as most patients' thyroid status is well controlled. Finally, Thank the patient Thank and arrange some thyroid function blood tests, which will be in most cases far more useful than clinical examination.